at Posey Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about USB audio interfaces. We're just going to be going over the really basics on what you want in one before you buy one. So, first off, you want one that's got great converters. A USB audio interface's main job is to convert audio. If it does not do that, you are in trouble. So, for example, let's say I'm speaking English, as I am right now, and there is a guy over there. We'll name him, you know, Jose, and he speaks French. Go figure. So Jose's over there speaking French, and I'm like, oh man, I need a translator. We're gonna call this translator uh, Frank. And Frank knows French and English, so we're we're in luck. So I I tell Frank, you know, da ba da ba da ba da, and then I expect Frank to accurately translate that into French so that Jose can understand me. So I, I do that, and he translates it, but I can tell there's been a loss there. Uh, Jose over there understands a little bit of what I said, but there, there's been some loss in translation. He is Frank, the translator, is not a very great converter. He is not the best. Then we go over here and we find, I don't know, Linda. And Linda is excellent at both languages. Like she's got like degrees in, in both of these languages and she's worked professionally as a translator for a while. So I tell her, ya da 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 da, and then she translates it. Then I, and then I can see that Frank or not Frank, Jose has everything. He gets the whole bit. It is like that with audio interfaces. Converters are the big deal. You're going to see them try and shove all sorts of things in your face when you try and buy these things. But the big deal is the converters. That is the big deal. And the preamps. If you've got preamp, you're going to need some sort of a preamp before you go to the converter. But anyways, that's a big deal. So if you have a converter that's crap, you're going to get something that sounds kind of like your signal, but it's probably been emphasized in crappy ways versus a great converter will sound really nice. Now, there are converters that go all the way from, you know, Scarletti interface, which you can get really, these are good quality converters. So these are the ones I use them. They sound great. You get totally professional results if you're on a budget, but they also have things like the Apollo out there that are phenomenal, but they cost like a thousand dollars. So you kind of, you know, you got to, pick and choose what you want. So these are decent converters. Totally recommend them. This is what I have. I have a bigger version of the Scarletti 18i20 over here. It's done me well. Maybe one day I'll get a super fancy one. But that's like for mastering houses and stuff who really want just like pristine signal. Another thing that's a big deal is on a USB audio interface is besides the translation. Let me go back to translation real quick just to show you how this is. I'm going to assume we're not going to be using any outboard gear, by the way, in this tutorial. But as we talk about I.O., I'll mention that, I guess. But when you run audio in your interface, it's got to translate it into numbers so your computer can record it. And when you run it out, it's got to take those numbers and translate them back into electricity to send to your speakers. So your speakers know how to vibrate or not know. They just vibrate and you hear your signal. That converters, that process is really important. And oftentimes, if you use outboard gear, you're going to go through that process more than once. So you really want something that's true to the truth. It actually does what it's supposed to do. Now, the preamps, we talked about in the last one. So I'm going to give preamps a rest. But preamps are another massive deal. And you, again, have really expensive ones and really not expensive ones. I recommend the Scarletti for those of you on a budget or the Focusrite. But PreSonus is also good. There's, there's lots of good other options out there. So there's, like, for example, I've got this guy. This is an H4 Zoom microphone. He's all right. I do not recommend him as an audio uh, USB audio interface. However, this can be one. So let's talk about the next thing you're going to want in your audio interface that people are going to try and shove in your face. The There is the... Besides the preamp and the, th and the thing, they're going to try and tout their I.O. And you got to think about how much I.O. you really need. Most people... If you're like an EDM artist or whatever, you're not going to need that much. Two channels can probably do it. This will allow you to buy better converters and better preamps against more I.O. So I.O. here, as you can see, I have two. This is a Scarletti 6i6, meaning it has the potential to reach six inputs and six outputs. This is a Scarletti 18i20. It has the potential to go from 18 inputs and 20 outputs. But right now, it can only handle eight inputs that is it comes with eight preamps already it can already do that but i would have to buy another unit with more preamps which can be quite pricey that i can hook up and expand this is called future proofing your studio maybe one day you want to do bands maybe one day you you know you have big dreams you may consider buying a unit that will give you future options that's i totally bought way over what i need currently because i know one day i'm gonna wish i had this so i have it now so now i won't wish that but i didn't buy the extra 
parts that will allow me to reach its full capacity quite yet. So you might want to keep that in mind too. Future proofing your studio. Now this is uh, this is my mobile. That's another reason why I bought this is I'm constantly doing mobile, so I needed something small. So you need you may consider I/O, and you may want it. You want they should do this automatically. But if for whatever reason you're looking at the bare minimum cheapest piece of crap converter you could buy just so that you have something i mean maybe, maybe you're in that situation you know some people are all you got to do you want to make sure that they've got this instrument that plays nice with with instrument level signals so if you're not familiar with this microphones and instruments happen to put out different signal levels i mean i this was news to me when i was new so you know you got to start you got to learn at some point so they put out different level signals, so this means that if you want to record them, you're going to need to use the preamps differently, and you're going to want them to hit the preamps differently, and in some cases, like on the back, you're going to want to be able to adjust, because sometimes they're just quarter inch inputs, and that's another lesson. Just because it has a quarter inch jack does not make all quarter inch jacks equal. I could, We could talk about jacks too, because there's one called TRS, tip ring sleeve, and tip sleeve. It's, if you don't know what those are, go look them up. It's important. So, but anyways, in this case, Scarletti comes with its own mixing software. So that's another thing you want to make sure. Uh, and in here, I could configure pads and instrument signals and stuff like that. Here on this interface, I've got pad and instrument line signals that I can activate right on the interface. On this one, I have to go through the software. So it, this one came with a software, a lot of them do, to allow you to configure it to do its thing. Now, the next thing you want to be aware of is latency. What is the latency of this interface? Will you be able to record vocals or will every time you hear the word, you say a word, are you going to be hearing that word when you're trying to say the next word? No singer is going to be able to sing when they're hearing something they sang a second ago. Like, that's a big delay. So you want to be make sure that you've got really tiny delay. There are a couple ways of defeating this. And one of them is actually on the 2i2, this is a 6i6, ironically the bigger one doesn't have it, but on the 2i2, it's got two outputs. Well, it's got two, it's got, it's got a direct out, meaning, I believe that's what it's called. Anyways, you could plug it in, oh, it's called direct monitoring, that's what it is. So you're recording your singer, right? You have a mic plugged in. Well, they've got a special output that you can plug into, and you can hear yourself and it goes like this. Like if this was the, it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. It just goes out. While the, the rest of the signal goes whoop into your computer, right? While the other one just goes out. So there's zero latency. You hear yourself singing. An alternative is to get one ear to, to talk like, to sing like this. So you can hear yourself acoustically while you're doing it. Or if you're a big headphone stickler, you can get one that does that. So that's called direct monitoring. And it basically splits your signal. A lot of USB interface uh usb mics like the nxl they make some good usb mics H however don't do that for music okay for podcasting um but anyways they'll have something that you can plug into so you can get the audio before it goes through the conversion so there's no delay However, these ones don't. The reason is they have chips that are specially designed to handle audio. They can handle audio a million times better than your built-in audio. Uh, most computers have built-in audio options. I believe actually all of them do. I don't even know why I said that. But like core audio, if you're a Mac guy, if you're not a Mac guy, uh, I don't know what PC uses ironically. I don't know like the official name. It's just built-in audio. It's called uh, Realtek, I believe is the one. That's the one I see all the time. So Realtek, and it's a giant pain in the freaking butt. But anyways, what basically happens is when you connect this via USB, you connect your USB audio interface via USB, you are taking it and replacing the I.O. with this through a USB line. So once you have that and you set it up, you want to make sure that your latency is very, very, very low. And so what you have here is if I go to settings, I, ASIO, ISO, ISO, whatever it is, buffer, you see that I could choose it. Now, 20 milliseconds is quite noticeable, but the buffer allows me to have a lot more processing going on. So if you're getting lots of clicks and pops and crackles, chances are your buffer is too high. Your computer doesn't have enough time to send out the audio in real time and to also process you know, all that audio. So you may need to lower it. While you're tracking, which is a word for recording, in case you didn't know, the, you want a low 
buffers. So you don't want a lot of processing going on because it could screw you over. But later on when you're mixing, you can probably afford to have a 20 millisecond buffer because it's no big deal. This will also have an impact on your MIDI performance because if you're playing MIDI, you're triggering sound that has to be processed unless you're not triggering any sound, in which case that's weird. But anyways, that, that might be important. So four milliseconds is great. It's four it's, so a millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. So four of those, that's not very big. So very, very not noticeable. Once you get into the territory of like six or seven, it starts becoming a little bit more noticeable. You'd be surprised at how accurate your ears are when you have emotion attached to the sound you're about to hear. Not your ears, I guess, just your brain. And it knows. So you can fool it, though, if you get it to go fast enough. Now, another thing that you want to be aware of when you're buying one of these. So we've covered preamps. We've covered converters. We've covered microphones. But we haven't, well, we haven't really covered microphones. Phantom power. So phantom power is the ability to, if you turn this on, it will ascend power down your mic line to your microphone. Now, in this case, and it's different for your inter whatever interface you have, I have two of them, but if I push this one button, it puts phantom power out them both. Now, there are some mics out there, usually the ribbon mics, that will explode. They'll literally, whatever mechanism they use, in this case, a ribbon mic uses a very, very, very small ribbon to move to create the, to transduce the SPL, the air pressure into an analog signal. If you send power through that thing, it could fry the ribbon. And so it's a very bad thing. But other mics like condenser mics need a charge to create, to accurately, well, effectively capture sound. So you want to be careful about whether or not you're plugging in mics. So if you only have the option, if you want to use a ribbon mic, but you also want to use a condenser and you want to do it on the same take, can't do it with this interface because the phantom power is linked to both channels. So I would have to pick a mic that doesn't care if there's phantom power there. Like I could pick a ribbon and uh, a Shure SF57 and not use phantom power. Or I could pick two condensers and turn it on. A Shure SF57 doesn't care if there's phantom. It's, it's pretty much fine. Most condensers, most dynamics are okay with phantom power. But I still wouldn't recommend throwing it through Phantom Power. Just, you know, on this interface over here, I've got oh, quite a few more options. I can turn on Phantom Power for inputs 1 through 4 separately from 5 through 8. I believe it's that way. Yeah, that's how it works. So I could do that. So if I have some ribbons and I want to use those, I could just plug them into different inputs. Good to go. So now this is an upper one. Another, there's a few other controls on this one. Uh, namely, I have a dim, which just basically, it'll take my volume level and dim it by a set amount. It's basically a pad. And then the other one's mute. So it'll mute my master out, but it will still send signal out my, uh, out my headphone sends, which is another good point. You're probably going to want two of these. I'm just telling you right now. For obvious reasons, you're going to want two. You may also want to take note that they're a quarter inch. So you're going to want adapters if you're buying this new. A few other things that you should be aware of are things like SpeedIF. There's SpeedIF out, so I have a couple more I.O. here. We're not going to be talking about SpeedIF. And on this one, I have ADAT. And I also have something called Word Clock. So when you get to a more advanced system, you may have an issue syncing your gear up. Because digital audio has got to be in sync. If things are not you know, all in sync, you're going to have a problem. I believe they use crystals. I read a whole book about this, actually, because I'm a nerd. So they use, like, heated crystals, oven. There's an oven crystal thing. I totally forgot how it works, but I vaguely remember it. Basically, you want something with the highest clock source, the thing that can produce the most stable code. This one actually has a separate clock out. So I would use this as my master and slave everything to this so that it was all in sync. This will not be an issue though for most of you guys who are watching this. But in the event that you do need it, that is there. Another consideration is MIDI. So there you see there's MIDI output on the back here. Mo I've never used this, to be real. But I've been in a number of my friends' studios that, that do use this quite a bit. As soon as you get analog gear, suddenly inputs and outputs tend to matter a whole lot more. And so right now, I don't have too much, but right, so it's not that big a deal. But I have, I have future proof to my studio, and I have an interface that, can, that I'm now no longer in worry. I can actually make it so that these things can work together, not in daisy chain, but I can run this in standalone and run it into here if I need more analog I.O. Because I could set up a number of mixes and configure things in here and send it out here. So this would be considered digital. So you see, I have just all these channels, but they don't exist on there. 
this could be very useful if I want to set up uh, mixes or whatever to send to different people. So I have, as you can see, I can configure things. This is the software that comes with it. Now, on the this is a USB audio interface as well. But again, I would use this in the field. So I'd plug my mics into here and record to an SD card instead. So it's got a digital to analog converter. It's even got a headphone thing. The reason I don't like it is because it's driver's crap. If you were going to run this through your computer, you can imagine this is doing so much that it's not been optimized to interface like that, to record straight to a computer. So it's just not that great. I've tried it. I could get it to work okay, but like when you compare it against something like these, it just fails in comparison. I just I can't do it. So those are the most important ones. So again, in order of importance is your converters, then your preamps, then you have your IO, then you've got your phantom power capabilities, then you've got your, uh, let's see here. I don't know. After that, it kind of is like a blur. Uh, some of these are Towton USB 3, but these are specialized. This is USB 2. I'm using USB 2. You got to keep in mind, these are specialized units specifically made to do a thing. So if it says it's got this latency, it's been put through tests and stuff. It's got that amount of latency. Like this has really freaking low latency. I can run a crap ton of audio through it because the processors and think about it in your computer, it's not specifically made for for digital signal processing so the path that has to travel on your computer will probably be longer here they've been made as short as possible they've been made as effective as possible with the components that do the best job at that thing and then it sends it to your computer in a way that your computer can most effectively handle it so don't sweat 2.0 versus 3.0 however 3.0 is the way of the future so you may consider 3.0 because it will allow these to do their job even better so, but if you if it touts 2.0, no big deal. Like this is a 2.0 and this is a 2.0. It, it doesn't matter. I don't have crazy latency problems. Now, again, when you're doing the singer thing, I got to take my latency down quite a bit so that when I send it to the singer. Now, you'll notice here that I've configured it. There's actually a bunch of routing presets I can have, like DAW tracking, zero latency tracking, mixing, which will probably, which will change my output configuration and stuff with my speakers and all manner of those types of things. But you see here, I've turned off the channel audio here. Why is that? Well, you see, I'm still getting that channel of audio. That's because FL sees it separately. This is configuring it to configure, to work with Windows currently. So my broad, my screen capture software actually sees nothing at the mic input. I'm running audio out here into the microphone input in the back of my computer, and then I'm running audio into my computer, and then I've configured it as such so that basically it works the way I want it to work. If you have any questions about USB audio interface, maybe now, I'm not going to, like, you probably, probably, you come up with some weird questions sometimes. I'm assuming that you just want to record audio in your computer and be able to, like, record your voice or whatever in a decent way in your computer. So, when you're buying an interface, though, you have all those extra options you should really consider. So, that is it in a nutshell. I really hope this was useful for you. Uh, I know we didn't cover, like, in depth, like, oh, what's the difference between mic line signal and instrument signal and all that stuff. But if those things are issues, there are tons of great resources if you don't know about those types of things. But, again, basically it just changes the way your interface will gain the signal so that you don't have to do weird things with your preamp. And this is going in the back, in which case, if it's all digital for the for that part of the thing, you may need to, to change out hits here and change the volume on your guitar or whatever. So usually it's pretty intuitive. Another thing is you want to make sure you have the right cables for that kind of a job. But this isn't a lesson on cables or recording per se. It's a lesson on just USB audio interfaces in general rules. If yeah, again, so I'll take normal questions maybe, but as if you're going to ask for like, what do you recommend? It's the Focusrite Scarletti 6i6. That's what I recommend. If you want to track or be really portable, I recommend a 2i2. If you want a lot more, just get a bigger one, an 18i20. Presonus is great too. You know, there's lots of superb interfaces out there. And now you, you'll come across boards. I have, I have not heard... I've, amongst the professionals I've talked to, not very many people recommend Soundcraft, so I'd steer clear of Soundcraft. I've not messed with Tascam. I've seen some killer deals by Tascam. So maybe Tascam is the way for you because they, they offer a lot of I.O. But again, you got to ask yourself, what are what are all the other components like? So you want to look at the specs and see what the, what's the deal you're getting. But maybe they have great converters and stuff because I saw one that was like, whoa, that's a pretty cool deal. But anyways, subscribe. Support me on Patreon and have a blessed day. So it has sounded like that before. And at the end, it sounds like this.
So how can I make, you know, basically use it to enhance my drum loops? Now I'm going to be showing you a number of mixing tricks. I do have some basses in here just for the sake of showing you all of this in action. Here it is. Here it is. 